Hello, and welcome to Rav's Hall of Fame, the show where every time we have a guest and they try to convince me why their underrated favorites should be in my Hall of Fame. Today's guest is good friend Kelsey Jubstrom. Kelsey, hello. Hello. <laughs> now, Kelsey, I've known you for, uh, God. Six years. Si oh, yeah, no, six, six years. years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, probably six years. Yeah. Uh, and you are a sports fan, mostly a, I know you as a football fan. Mm -hmm. You're huge. You're from Wisconsin. You like the, the Green, Green Bay, Bay Packers. Packers. Yeah. With me being from Chicago, this is a very unlikely pair that, uh, I'm a Bears fan and you are a Packers fan and we are together in perfect harmony. We've always managed to settle our differences in really kind ways, <laughs> even though... For the majority of the time we've been friends, my team has always dominated your team. I think that's the thing, is that your team has always dominated my team. You had I'm nothing to say. Chill about well, yeah, no, I'm pretty cool about it, is that I'm pretty cool is what it is. But this year, things have taken a turn for the worse. Things have taken a turn. Uh, now, but today, you are not talking about football. Mm -mm. You're talking about uh, uh, entirely different sport. Who is your athlete or team, and what's the sport? Oh, sorry. Oh, my bad. I did it again. Oh no. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, uh, but before we get into that, <laughs> we're gonna talk about. <laughs> Uh, if you're watching this, just as a reminder, if you guys are watching this on uh, the CH2 channel, uh, you can also watch it on Dropout. Uh, subscribe to Dropout today. You can view sketches three days early. Oh, my God. It's like living in the future. Did you know that? Did I you know you could subscribe to now Dropout I know. and now. you could watch sketches three days early? I didn't know that. I'm going to go do that. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Go do it because you're already late. By three days. <laughs> okay. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> Quick detour. Uh, so right now, uh, you're talking about uh, your, your, your person is, mm. who is your person and who is, what is the sport? I feel. Lizzie Yarnold. Lizzie Yarnold. Uh-huh. She is from Great Britain. Uh-huh. This sounds like a cartoon character. No, listen to I me. immediately listen. think of Hey Arnold. Raphael. Yeah. I'm going to just time out real quick on this, because uh -huh. this girl. Uh-huh. It's two time. Is she a girl or a woman? <laughs> we'll go ahead and call her a woman. She is full grown. Uh, she is the gold medalist uh, in the Sochi Olympics and Pyeongchang Olympics for, and I hope I'm saying that, Korea. From the Korean Olympics. Uh, uh, for the skeleton. Skeleton. For the skeleton. Sounds scary. Okay. Now, of course, I know what the skeleton is, because I'm not a complete, stupid, idiot, lame, dumbass. You're just but a Bears fan. If I was... <laughs> Ooh, this, see, this is what I'm talking about. See, I, can, <laughs> I, I feel like I take it better than <laughs> better than you would be able to take it. It's true. Uh, okay, but true. yeah, obviously I know what it is, because I'm a smart person. I'm a brilliant man. So I'm going to tell you right now that the skeleton uh -huh. is... Uh -huh. You've got like a computer right in front of you, too. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You can't you go even get ahead. out the Google? What is it? What is it? The skeleton is like the luge. Yes, but, right. It's like the luge. But it's like we we weren't like really pushing ourselves in the luge. What we need to do is we need to go head first on our stomach yes. instead. Yes. So this says that the skeleton, which I'm only looking at just to be right, uh, right. kind. Uh, the skeleton, uh, yeah, it's basically like... It's like the luge, or if somebody like saw the luge and was like, "We need to ratchet this up a bit." Right, right, right. So they go, they go head first. It's like a bobsled, if, but you're the bobsled. You're they the go bobsled. head first down. Uh, this says eighty miles an hour. Yeah, it's like a frozen water slide. It's like, it looks fun. It looks like a fun thing. It doesn't look well. I mean, I, I mean, if you like if look at that, the track, yeah, it looks like an amazing water slide. Right, right, right. So like the kid in me was like, oh, it's like going to a water park, but yeah. then it froze, and so now I'm gonna take this tiny little sled. I'm gonna be like millimeters from the ground. I'm gonna go head first, reaching speeds over 80 miles per hour. Yeah, and going down this like frozen water slide. Yeah, the, the, what is the type of person that does this? I mean. They have to be like insane. I mean, it's some part of, part of them has to be insane. Yeah, because this feels like because I saw Cool Runnings. This feels like one of those categories of sport of Olympic sport where 
it's nobody's first choice. I cannot imagine that you that you grew up wanting to do this. Also, who has the ability to practice this every day? Well, right. I mean, like, we grew up in the Midwest. Yeah. It snows. I went sledding as a kid. That yeah, was same. fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was fun. <laughs> At no point was I like, this needs to be bigger, icier, <laughs> crazier. I need a sled. I wanted an inner tube because... That was really fun. Right, right. You really take it. Yeah, yeah. But no, no, nothing in me said, I want like a little tiny like body board that's got little skates on yeah, the Yeah, no, because it, it hurts. It hurts a lot. Because I, I went, we used to go sledding at, at the Dan Ryan Hill in Chicago. It's like the Dan Ryan Woods, which sounds not good. <laughs> but mm -hmm. uh, we would go there and uh, yeah, sometimes it would like, it would rain and then it would be ice and then it would snow on top of it. And it would just be like pat like it's hard. Right. Uh, Same. Yeah. And you go you go down there, but there's like divots and stuff. Right. And we would <laughs> and we would do we would go down it hard on, on like a sled like this on my stomach. Uh, I can't t really tell how big this sled is. It does not look that big. It's but I big. feel like I would go down or, or on like the one from uh, Christmas Story. Uh, that uh, Ralph Ralphie or whatever his name is. Right. But yeah, and we would go down those, and you would hit like a dip and just be airborne. And my dad's just watching this. Right. <laughs> or he's on the sled with me. See, yeah, we had a hill similar to that, but it yeah. was like, um, so the majority of the hill would always have snow, but then there'd be like the center part that like everybody went down. Yeah. And then it got really icy, so essentially it was like beautiful snow, and then the center of like ice. And if you went down in your inner tube, you're probably going to pop the inner tube because it's ice. Yeah, it hurts. Yeah. And you're not going to go down in your saucer unless you're a crazy person and your parent wasn't with you. Right. Because my parents were not letting me go down that part of the hill. That's also my thing. What parents of skeleton Mine. athletes oh, yeah. are like, I give you my blessing. Well, no, what, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna get the parents. Well, what was I this lady's situation, that. Lizzie Yarnell? I mean, her parents were very proud. They were crying. They were very happy for her. But it's a, it's like insanity. I mean, uh, you watch some of the gymnasts too, and I forget her name, but like, and their their parents can't even look when they're on the balance beam because yeah, yeah. yeah she slips. She's gonna break her neck. Yeah. This girl's going head first, 80 miles per hour. Yeah. I'm scared sometimes when I'm going 80 miles per hour in my vehicle with my safety belt. Does she on. have a family, Lizzie Yarnell? She's like married. her own. Okay. I think she's gonna have a family. Uh huh. How good was she at this? She was really good. So okay. you are right. There, uh, a lot of cases, these athletes um, have trained in other track and field uh, competitions beforehand. Yeah. Uh, there's another gentleman from uh, Ghana and Denmark, I want to say, who was a runner at first and is now training for the skeleton uh, for the next Olympics uh -huh. in Beijing. Um, and she, she was a heptathlon. It's like the seven. You do. Seven oh, it's the seven one. Okay. Right, right. Yeah. 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 So, but in 2008, she was inspired by another athlete and decided she was going to train for this. She was inspired. She was inspired. So she, she inspired. stopped. She was not able to continue doing what she want with the right, seven with the track and field uh, events. Right. Yeah. So now, but she wants very badly to be in the. She wants to be an Olympic athlete. Right. And she will clearly do anything to do that. And I then mean, this was the one. That's a thing. That's a certain kind of person, right? So yeah. It's like, yeah. If I mean, I think runners are a different type of people to begin with. But like this woman. Like you just with runners, you just see them break their body down, right? Like I've watched cross country meets where women are just like vomiting and stuff after it because they yeah, push their body gross. too far. Right. It's not like jogging in Los Feliz, which is a wonderful neighborhood. <laughs> it's a really nice neighborhood. <laughs> it's a lovely section of Los Angeles. Very expensive, but that is Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Um but so this woman, she didn't. Uh, yeah, she she's obviously like an athlete. She wants to do this, um, or she wants to go to the games, and she crushes it. So like in 2008, she started training. Yeah. To do it, but training on it, like because which country? Great Britain. Okay, so she's training from. Like, she's training in Great Britain, and right. she has. She's going on these sled rides every day. No, you can't do that because they don't have a skeleton course. Okay, see, this Britain. is my thing. This is my thing. So this mm -hmm. is a sport that you, she, 
you, this is a sport that you wouldn't think that you'd have to practice for. And I think that I am right. <laughs> she had no, she, it wasn't even possible for her to practice this. Now, listen, listen, she this did is, practice. They, she everyone should apologize to Allen Iverson. Practice is worthless. Well, not really. It's not worthless. But for, for a sport like this, Allen Iverson would have been, he would have excelled. Listen, she trained. She trained a lot every day. Well, you train like as far as like just general keeping yourself in shape and stuff like that. Sure. I think we're downplaying a little bit on that part. But oh, I'm supposed to convince you too why she should be in it. She was training like any other Olympic athlete. Okay. So, but like also, a Tim Tebow? Because he trains and he's not. Re- oh, well, I guess he does. He plays baseball, baseball now, kind of. But like, let's be honest too, Tim Tebow should have been a tight end and. Yeah, but I mean, even when Same. he wasn't, when he got cut from the NFL, he was still training. Like training he was an at, yeah, yeah. He knew he wanted to continue. Yeah, to be yeah, an athlete. yeah. And right, and that's yeah, what makes a difference. But right, I mean, right. she's training like The Rock or something. But she's, she's not right. They're not doing their like hour at the gym like we would do for a New Year's resolution. Right. I would never do that for a New Year's resolution. But yeah. it, it's not just like that. Like she's l- training very, very hard because the way that they hold their body, they have to hold their body and down the course to make it as aerodynamic as possible. Right. So like their head is like millimeters from the ice while their gaze is up. So it's like this awkward plank and the way they're holding their shoulders plus their feet from like their thighs all the way to their toes are not on the sled. So they're holding those up as well. I tell you what, she wins in the courage category. She's got a point in the courage category because I think that's a huge that I think that honestly, I think that's the one thing that you need is just courage you have to want to be an olympic athlete bad enough and not care about uh losing your life so much because i i swear to god if you told me ahead of time just give me a quick rundown of how my body needs to be on the sled i could do that right now (laughs) uh i don't know if i would be able to get over the mental block because it would have to be you strip everything else away and this is my only option of like a career choice but i would absolutely be able to do it because once you start going down that hill your body's just gonna freeze up anyway right no but it can't but that's the thing because like any little adjustment going that fast yeah or any right 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 movement like you're that's right you know so don't move but, but and you that's have exa- to move at some point. So it's oh. like the complete control that you have. Because yeah. the only steering of that of of the sled, right? Unlike the other sports that use a sled and go down an ice slide, yeah, um, is their body or their and their toes. Yeah. So like, man, I think I could do it. I got strong toes. Yeah. <laughs> I had I was flat footed or I am flat footed, and they used to make me do like feet exercises did it work cur- uh, I never knew this no it didn't work but, <laughs> so wait, but I'm just saying run, my feet are very strong now <laughs> but wait if you run yeah do you have cause like, pain yeah is that what you're gonna say when I run I have very, a lot of pain because I'm flat footed so the whole foot just hits the ground oh this would be great cause the, the amount and I did cross country so the amount that you're running is very short the time that you're running is very short at the top of it See, I can do yeah. sprints pretty easy. Right, but you're also running like your body. No human body is made to run that way. They're essentially like all the way down to the ground, I'm pushing short. this tiny little sled. I'm real short. <laughs> <laughs> I'm super short. Wait, how tall are you? Uh, I'm not tall. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, almost, almost five. Gotcha. I'm almost five nine. Almost five nine. Yeah. Oh, you're like the same height as her. Oh, see, I'm telling you, I could do this. She's 5'8". I could do it. I'm not sure if that's if that's a point for her or against her. What I want to know, Raph, because I haven't seen you shirtless in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or ever. Uh, <laughs> how strong is your core? Oh, super strong. I, I have, I mean, that's my strength. I, the famously strong core. Famously strong? What does your core entail? Entail, entail, entail. What's a core? Talking, what, What's a core? I'm talking about like your abs. Like yeah. Your abil- it's crazy strong so abs. You, so if you were They're doing, almost as strong as my toes. <laughs> so wait a minute. If you were 
If you were about to do a plank right now, yeah, no shaking. Right, 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 right. You wouldn't right, shake. Right. Wait, you have to not shake. Right. Okay. Well, like all right. Like, but here, but okay. Like sit, but hold on. You're telling me about your famously. <laughs> but they. But how do you board. not shake if you're keeping your body like that? But also, you're in where wherever the hell you're surrounded by ice. Right, but that. And they're in Korea when it's cold. It's a Winter Olympics. <laughs> how are you not it, shaking? What? You can't shake on that thing. You can't or shake it'll, on that thing. Or it'll right. change the direction. Every, any little movement. All right. So, well, I might I wanna... not win, but I could do it. <laughs> I feel like you would you would go like you'd be out of it. Like you would wipe out pretty quick. Hmm. Oh yeah, that was in the movie too, huh? Cool running. Oh, cool running. Yeah, yeah. Uh. So they. So so what is so spectacular about her that? Uh, that would, I don't know, win me over as far as like, because right now I do think I could do this. <laughs> I, I think I could do it. Not only do I think I could do it, I think I could do it right now. <laughs> I think if you just gave me a quick rundown of it, I could, and we this was a little, the thing right we here. We gave you a little tight suit. I, yeah, I guess I'd have to, I have, have to, to do the, suit. damn, yeah. you got, no, but so how, yeah, so what is, is there anything else about, yeah. okay. So first of all, she's a female, which that's why, you know, it's a little harder for us to be aerodynamic. But okay. beyond that, this girl goes to the competition. She has been sitting in severe pain because she's had a slip disc for months at this point. God. Okay. Uh, and I think from reading uh, bits about her surgery, uh, like actually, like there was bony pieces removed. So she's sitting in so much pain where she was just medicating, like sitting in the morning medicating until her body, like until she could get up and walk and oh, be in enough man. comfort to do that. At the games, she has come down with a terrible chest infection. Mm -hmm. So she's like a bronchitis or something like that. She can barely breathe. She does her one practice run. She can barely breathe. She was about to step out of the games uh, because she couldn't even catch her breath. Who does she talk to about this? Was somebody like, well, do, do they have coaches? Yeah, they have coaches. And, yeah. And so she must have had a conversation with her coach at some point. Yeah. And she's like trying to get through it. And, they, and she got through it. And also. Uh, <laughs> Damn, somebody's got to call the fight. You got to stop the fight. Also, she has an inner ear disorder, which causes her dizzy spells. And she had been um, starting to manage that prior to the games. Right. So she's on a sled going 80 miles per hour. Head first. Head first. Down a frozen water slide. Yeah. Ooh, that sounds fun. It does. It looks fun. With an inner ear disorder that yeah. gives you dizzy spells. Right. You can't barely breathe because your chest has got to hurt because you've probably been coughing the whole time. Oh, God. Like, even, you know, during training. So, you're, you know, you know when you get a bad cold, it's like not only can you not breathe, but it's like if you've been coughing so much, like your ribs hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. is your core. Uh, so the, yeah, so yeah, she, her balance is off. So that's going to affect your steering or whatever. Uh, and probably maybe your movement, you know, cause if you like, if right now I thought I was off balance, I would move my body to make me on balance. Right. 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 Like th that would just be a natural reaction. Right. So she's probably doing that a lot on the so thing. She's got that. She's got chronic pain because of the slip disc. And also these people, these, these athletes can't really the body cannot handle more than like three runs a day because mm. the track is so hard mm. on your body. You're going that mm. fast. And like we talked about earlier, when you're going down the sled or when you're going down, even just as a kid, like a little icy patch sledding, it sucks. It's terrible. It hurts. It hurts. I still did it though. I don't know why. I mean, I was yeah. into it. You're alive. Yeah. 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 I was, I was are. very, yeah, I was very young, <laughs> but, um, and, uh, a couple months or a few weeks after the the games too she had a tumor in her knee surgically oh removed. no she had two surgery f following the games of things that she was dealing with while she was competing so she had a uh tumor removed from her knee that was causing her chronic pain plus the back plus the the chest infection oh my god and then she had an inner ear disorder and, oh my god and she went, came in and i want to say her last her last run was um like a full half a second uh, faster than her. That's a lot. That's a lot for in that sport. Yeah, for a sport like that. For yeah, like yeah. if you're watching any kind of race, a right. half a second is a lot is an eternity. Yeah. And because of that, she got her second gold from uh the games in Korea. Whoa. And she's the most decorated uh 
female winter athlete from Great Britain. Whoa! Yeah. So you would think that there are more athletes from Great Britain that are doing, I don't know. You would, but maybe they just suck. Because I don't really, I have We're no small. context for that. But still, that's still. but that's right. amazing. Right. Wow. Uh, wow. So that's, essentially she's having a flawless like heat like at the you know her last uh, yeah. run of the games how must everybody else feel if you were competing <laughs> against her the, the in great britain they have she couldn't practice so you she already know she on she the did. track she's working out right she's training yeah yeah but, but she, she couldn't practice the sport yeah right. like she, she couldn't got do six actual practice runs prior to the games right that's six minutes and you have four years life. to train for this uh and yeah she only did six minutes six, of right real like practicing the actual thing uh but you have you must have people from countries that have access to ice tracks no well they go they go to a, another country and i want to say i don't think it was where the games were but they kind of all go and um the skeleton athletes that don't like their countries don't have a place and then they go and practice there okay so, yeah so but these people but winter athletes aren't rich and famous Winter athletes aren't rich and famous. So I don't know how you would I mean, even no, afford that's, to. I mean, no, that's not true. Some, like, figure skating, you'll get those winter athletes. I, did you, you get... see the, uh, what what you call it, the Nancy, Nancy Kerrigan, what you call it? Wait, I, Tanya? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tanya Harding, yeah. Nancy Kerrigan, Ta Tanya yeah. Harding. They weren't, they weren't rich. Nancy <laughs> Kerrigan got, like, so many endorsements out oh, of that. Oh, yeah, once you get. I mean, Tanya Harding didn't, but Nancy. Yeah. Nancy Kerrigan came from like a little yeah, yeah. Money. Once you get once you get to that stage, but by and large, they're not rich and famous. And the this sport specifically, she can't be she can't be famous. Lizzie Yarnell? I think in like Great Britain, like she's doing, like they you know they have a little parade and you know yeah. they do they do something. That's good. So. But yeah, my point is that it would be difficult to go to fly back and forth. Uh, to do that if you don't have access to something oh, right, like that right. in your country but, but also need... yeah yeah you're right so that's a point that would be a point in that category and also but but great britain i think helps the athletes in some ways like people are like they buy certain tickets or something like that that helps support the athletes too uh, um interesting. yeah interesting yeah you know another thing about the dizzy thing is that it would probably be the hardest at the beginning if you're running and you're trying to be that low to the ground right. and trying to get on the thing, I would completely topple over. There's no way I would be. Able, well, no. Like the most important part of your run. That right. is the only part of the run that that's you're the creating, most important part because you're creating momentum there. Like that's that's the time where you're like getting all of the force that you're going to have, because at any point, that's why you're holding your body to be as aerodynamic as possible. Right. Because you don't want anything to slow you down do you really believe mm -hmm. that i couldn't do this you really think i couldn't do it like i love you do I you think you. you could do it no i think you could do it you could absolutely do it i absolutely don't think i could do it and it's not just because of the courage i think i would well maybe a little bit of the courage i think even if i got on it even if i ran yeah and i got on my sled yeah which it already seems like a problem like me trying to get on a surfboard but like even if I did, I feel like at some point I would be like, ugh, just because I would start to go too fast Ooh. and I would, it would freak me out. No, 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 no. I, 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 I think it would be different. I think, it, I think once you go start going that fast, I think you hold on harder. I think, I think I would accidentally like rub an elbow or something would go down ugh. and I would like, it would totally like, I would wipe out. Yeah. I'd be out of there. Oh, you would wipe out. Okay. 100%. And then I'd wipe out and I'd be in this little ice canal tunnel thing. Yeah. And I'd be like, bum, 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 bum. <laughs> but at least you finish. If you go all the way down, you Not finish. Not if I, no, you have to actually make it through like all the cool turns. Running. You just pick up the sled and I you think walk at that the point, rest of the way. When I'm not like in a bobsled protecting my skull, uh -huh. which, yeah, you might have like, I guess a helmet on. But like at that point, if you wipe out and you're like, your whole body is like dun, 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 yeah, dun, yeah, dun, yeah. against like ice walls. Yeah. I have a funny feeling that I'm not getting up. <laughs> like <laughs> somebody's e gonna have to come get you. Even if I'm awake, I think I'm probably just gonna be like, no. Yeah. Not moving. I'll come get you on my run. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right after you. 
no, is, but I think yeah, no, okay. I, I also, so I do think that by and large, most of the athletes in this event, this was not their first choice. I definitely think that, but sure, there's probably a couple where it was. Yeah, no, 100%. How bad would you feel? I just can't imagine putting myself if this in that wasn't position. Your, this wasn't your first sport, and, or if this was your first sport, yeah, and if this you was just my first sport. the guy sport. that was like, nah, I couldn't do anything else. Yeah, right, exactly. Hey. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't do anything else, so I want to do this. I couldn't really practice for the past four years, so I put six minutes in, and then they, they come and they beat you by, not only do they beat you, but decisively by a half a they second. Right. I mean. What kind of, how does it, how do they stay, how do they not fall when they're running? What do you mean? On the... On the uh, when they're taking off, yeah. So they have these like little like they're like cleats, but they're tiny little bristles, like metal bristles that like spikes that go into the ground oh. or go into the ice. But okay, it, so it almost this looks is like, like a toothbrush. That's how thin those little spikes are. Right, right. right. Or like at least, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. I think I can. I think I can. I, I think know. I might be able to. Tell you, I, I think know. like the level of insanity that you have to have. Yes, just to you have look to be down, insane at this yeah. first of all so think about it this way like you're like looking at this course which isn't just like one water slide right it's like loops and stuff and corners that you have to know what's going so you right. can prepare your body within you know hundreds yeah. of a second yeah to just execute appropriately whatever but you're you've got bronchitis Real bad. Haven't been able God. to get the urgent care yet. Right? Man, yeah, this that is pretty crazy. And it's in it's a winter sport. It's a winter sport. And you sport. got bronchitis. And your oh, ears God. messed up. And your back is like so. Imagine like I just tackled your you. Your back is like terrible. You've already been chilling with like a, a bronchial infection. Yeah. And you're looking at the top of this run, and you're about to go 80 miles per hour head first. And you haven't been doing that every day. <laughs> this is and a new experience been, for you. You've been training somewhat with like the pushing and the running uh, with your sled uh -huh. um, and things like that. You've right. been staying in shape because you have to have complete control over your body, your core, everything. Yeah. And you run, you hop on your damn sled, and you, and you're going like. 80 miles per hour you know slightly just faster at some points and you win it but also you have to be insane like there's got to be like a little level of like could not come back from this because yeah because you can't you're sick that is pretty crazy that you're sick you're basically naked in that you know skin tight suit right. and uh in constant chronic pain and you get in this thing did she have to take anything what do you mean? For the pain. Well, I think she was on some pain pills, uh, pain medication. That was uh -oh. the only way she could treat it before the game. Uh -oh. You can't go on surgery. Uh -oh. From what I know. There's painkillers involved? That, but see, but I'm but not a know. person. I don't think she did the day of the game. I can't imagine you being like on your, that would be even a bigger Yeah, that's disaster. probably a violation. But honestly, on, even if she did, I'd be fine with that. Because <laughs> that's not like a performance enhancing It's not going to enhance thing. anything, right? That's probably going to like... Yeah. If anything, it's... It, Make your performance terrible. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And she's a lady, and you already have to be more more aerodynamic. But, you know, but think about... But she's competing down. against other women. She's competing against other women. Okay, okay. But, like, think about it like this, too. I mean, like, you, have you seen some of the skeleton runs, like, just with, like, the GoPros? No. I watched it on my laptop. Not my TV. Not a huge screen. Mm -hmm. And just watching it online... It's like scary. It's scary just to watch it. Man. Okay. Well, she she's got I mean, she's got points all over the place. In pain endurance. That's a Hall of Fame category. Uh courage. Complete insanity. Complete insanity? I mean, to go head first. With the part of your body that's the most crucial because you can't really do anything else without your brain. And perseverance and problem solving. Because this late, I don't know what I don't know what events she was in. The seven events she was competing. Oh, in. the javelin. Once, it's like the it's a um, track and field. So like yeah, javelin. I don't know which right. ones those are. Oh, javelin, okay, okay. Hurdles. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, she couldn't. She there was a roadblock there, and she was like, look. The whole thing is, I want to be an Olympic athlete. 
And she figured out a way to do that. She did. Damn. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. All right. I think I'm ready. I'm ready to make a ruling on this. Even though she didn't practice, actually, that's a that's a that's a Mark Four because honestly, that's pretty cool. <laughs> that's pretty cool, and then they have flawless runs. Yeah, 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 flawless, flawless. runs without well, without I mean, a lot no, of right. without excessive practicing, like the actual thing. To have six practice runs prior to your actual event, God, like your body needs to and your mind needs to be completely ready and prepared to just only have that. As far as the number of practice runs. Yeah, I love it. Okay, well, I'm going to make a ruling on this right now. And we will say that Lizzie Yarnold, that's her name? Yeah. Lizzie Yarnold? Real Liz person. <laughs> Real person. <laughs> cool name. <laughs> it sounds like a cartoon character. Lizzie Yarnold is in the Hall of Fame. Yes. <laughs> that's yes. pretty incredible. Even though I do think that I could do the thing, I don't think I could win I will say that. I do not think I could win, I but I like think I could complete a run. If you if you actually were sitting at the top of a skeleton like like a uh, uh, run and you even got on a sled and went down it, you would be like my hero. Like you're already one of my Consider favorite it people. Done. Consider it done. But uh yeah. we have concluded this show uh if you are watching it on uh ch2 please jump on over to dropout subscribe to it you can view sketches three days early and see more of this all right <laughs> have a good day <laughs> yeah you're you're hi i'm Raphael from college humor Click here to subscribe, click here for more fun stuff, and click here to leave a detailed message. Uh-huh. You what? You didn't. I'd have did the same thing.